Whoa. Yeah, it rips. I hate wax oil with an absolute passion. You don't know when to stop talking, do you? No. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Maker. I'm Dave, for those of you that don't know me, and today we're gonna to be talking about restoration. And I'm gonna talk you through what's happened to this exact vehicle. So this car came into us in a very bad state. See this photo? And we kind of got carried away with the blasting, cleaning up and everything as we always do. So we started ice blasting, we started cleaning up in the corners, under the bumpers, things like that. We take things like steering guards off, um, shocks off, springs off, so we can get in and around the chassis everywhere. And we realised that the ice blaster just didn't have enough waff to get the crust off and the, the, what this car had, which was wax. I hate wax oil with an absolute passion because if it's done at the start, yes, yeah, fantastic stuff, but if it's not done at the start, it's trapped in, trapping rust and moisture and everything. So in the end, I remember not getting on with the ice blasting machine as I would love to. And I thought I need something more powerful. So I gave a company in Dudley, I think they call this something abrasives. And I had a 40 litre pot that Bruno's gonna show you inside there. And we let the chassis have it, it's basically. We got rid of every bit of rust and then we started our process. We started off with the red, which is the construction primer. We then went round with, um, areas which are in the chassis, stuff like that, and we fill that as much as we possibly can with the construction primer. Bits where the blast has been in there and it's taking things back to raw. We then go round with black tough coat. What you see here, and on the axles, this is black tough coat. This is arduous to stones, chips, things like that. This car, the full treatment including the axles and everything, so the paint process and everything, you're looking at about £3,000 plus VAT. And that is springs off, shocks off, um, rust prevention, blasted everywhere, get rid of all the crust and the, the crappy bits if you like. But this customer's gone a little step further. He's gone with progressive springs, galvanized spring seats, you'll notice on all our builds. We like doing that guys, it's a nice finish and you always see this area. And we've gone with stainless fixings, stainless retaining plates. You'll notice here, these are the Bilstein Advance shock absorbers. These are a great all round shock, so that's what we've gone with. And of course, our Bilstein Advance dampeners, we've got these available for 190 pounds, plus of that, if anyone would like one. They're available on our web shop. And there's little things that, as and when we're doing it, we can change things like steering arms, if you want to go with the Grinley with stainless ones, um, improve your track jods. I'd recommend, at this stage, pull the axles off like we like doing, and Super Pro bushes throughout, stainless fixings throughout grease your swivels, redo your axles, redo your seals, whatever's required while we're at this stage. So there you have it. Jake, what are we doing here today? Uh, we're putting a lifted kit on on this one tank because it had standard, uh, standard springs, standard shocks and we're pouring up a higher ones on. These ones, some bigger ones, some better shocks. Uh, and it's been tough coated, sandblasted everything down, got all the wax off and we sandblasted it. So what's the process with getting these new springs on? Uh, we, uh, we take off the old ones, then we get the new spring seats on, we put them on, then you put 
the springs on top. Make sure everything's lined up nicely. So we've got the plates on so the spring doesn't slide out while I was driving. So you put the, the, sh the plate in. Make sure everything's lined up properly. And then we've got some washers going between the plate and the seat just so the plate doesn't bend and damage itself. Yeah, then we line them all up and then we'll get some copper grease onto the bolts. We'll put them through and then tighten them up as tight as you can. John. Hi John. <laughs> Hello. What's happening to this car? We are doing another intake, aluminium intake, as usual. It's obviously four inch aluminium and air filter behind the headlight as per normal. I'm just making, I don't know what I would call them, it's probably a duct air guard. You know, that's gonna sit there like they usually do. Obviously that'll fix to that. So it's all rock solid steady. Um, other things I've done is heater pipes. They're all stainless steel. And we're trying something new. Yeah, we've got a little valve under there. So we've done away with the original heater mixer valve. That was the plastic one on the top there. So this should be a lot better. Circulation and he, he can close it off completely. So the air con will be you know, freezing. Uh, another thing that I've also ticked off the list is uh, an exhaust system. So same again, two and a half inch downpipes into a silencer, into a Y section, and goes three inch back then. The customer wanted to keep the back section of the exhaust. So obviously I've kept that on there and just tied into that. So we've got two silencers in there to keep it a bit more quiet. And also I've had to modify the sump because it's got ARB 
um, dips, or axles, I would say. A bit, far, a bit more over to the centres of the chassis, so I've had to notch the, the sun pump. And obviously, because I've cut some of the sun pump, I've had to gain the capacity elsewhere, so a bit of a wing on the side. Keep the oil capacity the same. And that's it. <laughs> So this is our, well, it's our new machine from Applied Concepts and it is, yeah, it's quite, quite the beast. So we picked this machine up uh, last week, I believe it was, after we had quite a lot of uh, bookings for tough coated chassis. Um, so we, have, we were using that, initially we were using that ice blaster that we showed you on, on a previous video, but really it was taking a little bit too long. We're still going to hold on to it because it is, it's, well they're not on here anymore, but it's really good for cleaning up like flexes of brake lines, different bits in engine bays, cleaning up like the plastics on wiring looms, like for that sort of stuff, that dry ice machine's really good, but for trying to get the chassis back down to bare metal and blasting all the rust and wax and well the abuse that the chassis have over the years it wasn't really quite wasn't really good enough so yeah i believe they've got in contact with these these chaps and uh yeah they've supplied us with this machine and it is yeah it is awesome it's a great bit of kit as you can see we've got all the bits uh well, it's, it's, it's uh, really fine, really fine, like beads of glass. And that's what, we're, that's what we're doing our blasting with. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good, really good machine. So it just plugs, in, plugs into the airline that feeds through to, to the compressor in the next unit. Uh, goes into the machine, you've, you've got... Um, a lever on the machine itself that you can control the airflow. So if you want to be blasting with more pressure or less pressure, you can adjust that on this handle here. Now, if you look close down here at the bottom, we've got a little red knob that you can twist. And that basically allows, allows how, much, how much glass is getting dropped through. So if you don't want to be blasting with quite as much, you can turn that down or if you want to be blasting and really hammering it, you can, you can allow it to be dropping more through. Obviously it will use it faster, but it's, when it's dropping loads through and you've got all your pressure on high, it, oh, yeah, it rips. Uh, it comes with a nice dead man's hand as well. So it, as you can see here, it's got a blocker on the trigger, so you can't accidentally be blasting away because if you go close to any bodywork with this, it will, 
it'll probably make a mess of the bodywork. So make sure if you if you're interested of getting one, maybe stay away from bodywork because <laughs> it will chew right through it. But yeah, it's yeah, this dead man's hand's really good. Like I said, it's got a blocker on it, so you can push that down, and then that enables you to get blasting away. And as soon as you take take your hand off, it stops. And then obviously the blocker comes back into play. But yeah, honestly, it's a really, really great piece of kit. I, I believe it's the, I want to say the 40 litre one. I believe, yeah, 40 litre one. And yeah, like I say, it is, it's one hell of a piece of kit. And uh, what's quite nice as well is they supplied us with this funnel. So this just sits on top of the blaster and then that means we can recycle all the glass that we've used, which is, well, it is really good. Um, obviously you can only recycle it a certain amount of times, but it doesn't, doesn't affect the quality really. So yeah, sieve it, sieve it through and blast away, but it saves a lot of time with this blaster rather than having to previously try and wire wheel it and then got that like I say we got that dry ice blaster it was better than the wire wheel but still taking a little bit too much time for what we what we were after um, so yeah decided to go go with these guys and yeah it is really an awesome piece of kit So guys, as you can see, this is the cap that goes over for the fuel filter. Um, we've decided to take it, take it off to give it a blast itself and uh, paint, it, paint it up on, like just on its own. But going back to the blaster, you can see so, what good job it does. Here is a bit that I've missed when it was still on the car. So now it's off, we could just nip that all up nice and tidy and get in the back of it as well but it was yeah pretty much the chassis was like that all the way around and rather than with a wire wheel where you have to hold it on or the dry ice this new machine turn it on get everything working and you just blast straight over it and it just comes straight off but yeah it leaves a really nice finish and um, the primer sticks really nicely to it as well so it's, yeah, good, good all round, really.
Dave, Project Christine, what's happening? Right, so today we are remoted into a company called Wartech down south and Wartech have been helping us with the tuning on these new LT, LS3 and 8-speed autos. Paul at um, Wartech has become a very helpful guy to ourselves and I shouldn't really tell you where I'm taking my cars because I don't want this guy to get any busier because he's a nightmare to, to get time with, which says he's good at what he does. And as you can see in here, we finished all the console, um, everything is in now and everything's working as it should. Yesterday we had the engine doing everything it should and it sounds absolutely beautiful on song. But we've had a couple of niggles with the gearbox, just down to, we're trying to give it the best updates we possibly can and try and get it shifted, you know, absolutely perfect. So Paul's just doing a little tuning in the background and then hopefully he's going to send me a file shortly and we can put it on the gearbox and take it out for another go. And the great thing about this is it saves me having to drag this car all the way down to Colchester, um, sorry, to Chichester to have it tuned by Paul himself. So what we're doing is sending files back into, I'm doing real-time logs using HP tuners. Save it on the laptop, take it out for a test drive, and he can see everything, all the data, what's going on with the gearbox, feedback, etc. I send it back to him, and he tells me, yes, I'm happy, no, I'm not, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it takes a bit of time, and um, I just wish the customer could be sat here and understand what goes into this, because it's by far simple, and it's just nice to have a good understanding of what's going on with the car, and I'm actually teaching myself as I'm going um, with someone who's time served like Paul. So, thanks again to Paul, and we're getting this car done, so... Please be patient, Tom. You're getting your car shortly. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. And I'll get back to emails when I can. So take care. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.